Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, Tuesday, May 5th, 13th. I've got the Roscoe 9 in the stand. I uh, just want to do a quick walk around. I did some house cleaning, uh, spring cleaning, fall cleaning, winter cleaning. Been uh, getting rid of some of the bikes, trading bikes, acquiring bikes, getting rid of more bikes. Basically, I'm down to three. So I've got the Hardtail, Roscoe 9. We've got the Polygon Cisco T7, and now the Ozark Trail gravel bike. So I have a bike for each use case. Let's take a look at the Roscoe 9. So I've got the bike in the stand currently. I rode this yesterday. I did about, what did I do? Five and a half miles yesterday in about a 40 minutes or so. Um, it was just kind of a lunchtime ride. I needed to get out, get some air. The trails were open they were actually really good yesterday but um i am gonna do some maintenance here i have to clean it um yesterday's ride was surprisingly clean so the many times that i've been out since 2024 um it's been real sloppy out there i don't go when the trails are red i definitely wait until they turn yellow um, but we haven't had really any green days yet. Every time I go out there, I get lots of mud here in the frame. I get lots of mud here. I get the tires get pretty muddy. Uh, drive chain was getting pretty dirty cranks. I added this mud guard specifically uh, for that this spring. Um, typically, I don't like these because I think they look goofy. But it actually kind of looks all right. It's growing on me a little bit. Um, so I added this because of all that splash that I was getting. I was getting, you know, dirt and mud flung up into here, uh, coming up here, getting me in the mouth. It was pretty terrible. On it does come with a down tube protector, kind of bash guard, I guess, if you're, you know, really hitting hard stuff. It kind of protects the frame. This is kind of a weak point of the bike. I like it. I like the attention to the detail and. Uh, frame protection and all that and you kind of preserve your bike a little bit but this thing man and i've seen online they do not stay on once you get water and dirt in there that thing just comes loose and it starts peeling at the corners uh, mine held on but it started kind of coming off you can see it and then it just barely pushed on it and the whole thing went and fell to the ground so I've got some 3M double-sided tape, and I put that on there, and then I uh, did a one-up strap. It's up here. A one-up strap around here and let it sit for a couple days, and then I just recently pulled it off, and it feels pretty sturdy on there. Rode it yesterday. got it wet. There's some dirt already getting in there, and I think it's going to hold on pretty good. I think if it falls off again, I may take it into Trek, um, see if they can order me a new one and have a fresh one installed. Um, I don't know. I guess it's really not a big deal. So the things that I've done to it to this point, added the, the mud guard here, changed out the grips. It comes with the basic Bontrager grips. They're, they are lock on. They're okay. They'll get you by. I like to add a little splash of color. It's usually always purple. Um, other things, touch points, right? Pedals, West, uh, West Chesters. Raised face Chesters. I got Ohio on the mind. Uh, this is my first, of, like, legit pair of race face chesters and honestly i actually prefer the fukers these and it could be just i got a different um uh, a bad pair or it's just the 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 spin quality fluctuates between them but these ones they just they don't feel as smooth they kind of stop the fukers i always get they always spin really freely and i kind of continue to spin these kind of just suddenly stop no change here to the drivetrain. This is what you get. You get the E13 Helix crank set, external bottom bracket, Shimano bottom bracket, typical stuff, 12-speed drivetrain. This is the XT rear derailleur with the clutch, 12-speed cassette. I think this is 10 to 50-something. And then you get an SLX shifter. So it's an SLX XT combo. And it works pretty well. Um, it uh, does come with an E13 uh, chain guide there. So this helps to prevent with any chain drops, which I don't know if that's common. If they had an issue in testing that, hey, this, this setup was going to uh, cause a lot of chain drops. But this is still a narrow wide chain ring up front. And it's a 30 tooth. 
I don't know why or how, and if you've got the clutch on, if you're gonna have a chain drop. I think this is more for aesthetics, as far as like, hey man, I've got this aggressive, rowdy hardtail, check out my chain guide, right? So I don't think that this is actually necessary. You probably don't need it. Um, it's, it's, it looks kind of cool, but then it also looks kind of cheesy. I don't know. I've never used a chain guide. If you've got a clutch derailleur and a narrow uh, chain ring up front, narrow wide chain ring, your chances of having a chain drop are so low that if you do have a chain drop, it's probably not because of your setup. It's more because, hey, your chain got snagged on something here or you got something in your cassette and it derailed completely or you were going off something so bumpy that you know, you're in this last year back here and you've got a little bit of slack and for whatever reason your clutch was turned off but even then my clutch is off right now there's not a lot of slack in there still so tightening that up it just adds to the rigidity i don't see any reason why that chain would ever come off of there like i said the only time that it could it might come off the back it might come down here or it might go up into the spokes if you bend your hanger or something maybe but dropping it in the front Come on, I don't know. I really don't think so. So it comes with these uh, XR4 Bontrager tires. These are tubeless ready, 29 by 2.6. So a bit fatter than what I'm used to. Um, usually run about two and a half, 2.4, maybe 2.3. Um, but I haven't noticed any like weirdness about it. I guess it gives me more confidence. That might be uh, part of the equation why I'm feeling more confident when I'm riding. Maybe these fatter tires are doing it for me. You get uh, four piston brakes, front and rear. These are Shimano something or others. I don't know exactly, but I'll put it up on the thing. These are really nice. So they remind me a lot of the MT200 budget option. They've got kind of that same look, but they're kind of different. They're kind of matte finished with a bit of a sparkle in there. Hiccups. But the lever, it's a lot shorter. This is really nice for one finger action. So I don't know if I can kind of, it's just in the perfect position there. You just grab it there. Um, this is a 35 millimeter bar, the diameter here. So this is not your 31 or whatever it is, 31.8 millimeter. This is 35 millimeters. So these are wider bars. They come in um, 780. And something that some people don't really mention a whole bunch is Bars are one of those things that are personal. This came in a 780 width. That's not supposed to fit everybody. That is not a universal size. These are what I cut off. I am currently running at 745. So basically they have these here, these markings and sometimes they're not bright white like that. Sometimes they're more engraved into the aluminum, um, but they do have markings on there. And even if they don't, some of the bu more budget bikes, um, they don't, you'll just have to measure it for yourself. So something to keep in mind, they come 780, that is super wide. For someone like me with short arms, I'm 5'7", 780, I felt like, you know, I was stretched out. 745 seems to be okay for this this riding um, on this bike. I did also add my Bontrager Verse Elite saddle. This is something that I invested in last year. Oh, so typically I'm not a saddle snob. I will ride any kind of saddle. The first few rides that you get when you just start getting back into biking, it sucks, right? Your butt is killing you. You're thinking, oh my God, how do people do this? So then you automatically reach for those gel seats or those super fat seats with all the foam and the comfiness of it and all that stuff. Eventually your butt will get used to the feeling of riding on a bike seat and you'll just kind of adapt. Just get yourself some padded shorts and ride that way. That'll help alleviate some of that pain in the, in the beginning. And that's pretty much the only thing that I've done to it as far as like, I guess you could say upgrades. You gotta do your touch points, you gotta do your grips, you gotta do your pedals, because this bike actually doesn't come with pedals. You gotta bring your own pedals to this one. 
Um, I'm sure if you asked them, they'd give you those yellow demo pedals that they use. Um, One other thing that I did do that's not really an upgrade, it's actually kind of a disappointment. So I have this inner tube wrapped here on the left or the non-drive side seat stay. This rear brake is noisy and it's gotten better. And I don't know if it's because of this or if it's just bedding in properly or what. But the first few rides, this rear brake was making so much noise, it sounded like a train. It was only the rear. And I did a little bit of research and not all brake noise is the same. Initially, I thought, okay, well, the pad just needs to be bedded in. So a combination of, I changed the rotor, I changed the pads and the rotor, and then I went back to the original rotor and I kept the, the, the different pads. So the original pads had the potential to be contaminated, you know, from the factory. You don't know what these bikes go through, who's touching them, if they're paying attention, not touching the disc. I'm sure they're not, but you know, accidents happen. Sometimes it's not this that's making noise, rather it's stuff going on here in the frame. And after reading some of the things that I found, it made perfect sense that I wasn't hearing brake noise. I was hearing vibrations here through the frame, the seat stay and the chain stay, and it was vibrating all the way up into the seat stay and I could feel it. So one of the suggestions was to add weight to your uh, frame. One guy put like those uh, tire weights that you see on like a car. I don't have any of those and I think that's kind of silly, but another guy put a reflector and it was just enough weight difference that it kind of silenced that hum of the vibration of the metal. So I had the idea to kind of wrap one of these inner tubes around here, similarly how you would do on a chain stay and then just kind of, because that's going to add a little bit of weight. It's also going to kind of insulate the tubing and maybe quiet it down. And so far, I think this is what's done the trick with that. You've got a 180 in the rear. You've got a 203 in the front. These brakes are awesome. These are the best brakes I've ever ridden. They stop you good. They're four piston front and rear. I like it. It's got an FSA headset. So this is a taper, 44, 56 probably. Haven't measured it, haven't taken that apart. Here are the Fox 36 with the uh, grip damper, fit grip. And then this got a lockout. This is the best lockout I have ever tried. Um, it's got different like points of firmness throughout here. So you can kind of adjust it here and then you can have it just fully open. This is how I've been riding it. Um, I haven't played too much with this. But, and then when you go this way, this is your fully locked out. And when I say fully locked out, it is actually fully locked out. Some forks you'll get, you know, the slightest bit of play, like a millimeter or two, and you can feel it kind of like click when you push down on it. This is super solid, really nice. All in all, great bike, get it, don't get it, whatever but it's on sale right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.